those who appreciate the work that we're doing here on Standing for Truth, please hit that subscribe button because we are just getting started. Today is going to be a fun little video on how we are taught something that contradicts the evidence. The story was already made and they look for evidence to validate it. Anything contradictory is either ignored or attacked. Today, we are going to be talking about dinosaurs and the fossil record. Did dinosaurs really evolve into birds? Let's investigate. The dinosaurs are already dinosaurs when they first, when they first appear. They look just like anyone would think a dinosaur looked. And this is an enigma for, for those who believe in the evolution of the dinosaurs. Scientists have been able to lay out some forms they think are transitional. The rule is there are no transitional fossils. And what we find in the fossil record, and contra to Darwin's hopes, this is the rule, is that a form exists in the fossil record it basically stays unchanged and it disappears from the fossil record without having been changed. That's got to mean something besides evolution because we don't ever see changes from this form into this form in the, in the rocks themselves. So it's coming from somewhere else. It's, it's, a, it's a paradigm that's being imposed on the data rather than the data providing the paradigm. Mm -hmm. And when we look at the fossil record, we can see that complexity is all there from the beginning, and this, this begs the question of where did all this complexity come from? We've unearthed millions of fossils around the world, so with all this evidence, so to speak, it's clear that the fossil record proves evolution, right? Well, actually, no. Didn't when Darwin was alive, and hasn't since he's been gone. In fact, Chucky e. D himself knew this when he wrote the following. Geology assuredly does not reveal any such finely graduated organic chain. And this, perhaps, is the most obvious and gravest objection which can be urged against my theory. The explanation lies, as I believe, in the extreme imperfection of the geological record. Okay, but surely after all the time since Darwin, digging and discovering fossil after fossil, we have a more perfect geological record that supports evolution, right? Not even close, bud. Listen to how two renowned evolutionary biologists summarize the truth. Instead of finding the slow, smooth, and progressive changes, they saw in the fossil record rapid bursts of change, new species appearing seemingly out of nowhere and then remaining unchanged for millions of years, patterns hauntingly reminiscent of creation. The fossil record doesn't show gradual change, and every paleontologist has known that ever since Cuvier, or however you pronounce that. Okay, I could go on and on, but there's always going to be opposing views because on both sides of the debate, the same evidence is interpreted through different worldviews. You gotta remember that, people. Facts don't say anything. People say things based on their interpretation of facts influenced by their worldview. But that's a whole other subject, and I don't want to get into it right now. Instead, hey, Let's have a little fun and take a look at some popular secular articles and charts on the fossil record and see if we can learn to separate facts from interpretation of facts by asking a few simple questions. Question one, did the artiste take any artistic license with what I'm looking at here? Check this out because this happens all the time. Look, isn't that sweet? So cute and fluffy. Okay, why do you think the artist made these creatures appear more human-like by throwing in an affectionate smile and depicting them hanging out like a human family going to a picnic or something? Why did he draw them walking upright? Why make the shapes and colors of their eyes more human than ape? Is any of it based on actual fossil evidence? Of course not. But if you want the story of evolution to appear more convincing, you just might fill in missing gaps with your presuppositional imagination. Just saying. <laughs> Question two, is the attention-grabbing headline or title supported by actual facts? For instance, take a look at this popular book called Why Evolution is True. We don't even have to go any further than the jacket on this one because on it you got a dino evolving into a bird in three simple steps. There you go. But then on the inside, this is written, and I kid you not. The jacket depicts a chronological sequence of fossils showing the evolution of birds. We do not know whether the actual line of descent included, now wait for it, the first three. Say what now? Doesn't that mean these three shouldn't be on the cover then? Which means all you got is a modern bird, right? No evolution, just a bird. Talk about worldview filling in gaps. On to question three. What do the graphics on evolutionary charts indicate? I mean, they sure do look convincing. For instance, on this one from the dinosaur book, you got solid red columns and white columns showing gradual progression over time. But 
Let's read the almost imperceptible two-point font over here. It reads, tinted areas indicate solid fossil evidence, which means the white areas represent no solid fossil evidence, right? Okay, then take them away. Uh-oh, looks like patterns hauntingly reminiscent of creation, I'd say, right from their own charts. And the same thing goes for the dotted lines on this one. Look at all of them. Just so we're clear, dotted lines indicate zero evidence. Remove them and what do you get? No transitional forms or evidence of gradual progression. A bat is a bat, a kangaroo is a kangaroo, and a horse is a horse. Of course, of course, unless of course the horse is Mr. Ed. Look, people, all I'm saying here is if you got facts, put them in there. If you don't, leave them out. But don't draw downright dubious daft, dare I declare, dunderheaded dotted lines of deliberate deception dogmatically and dastardly doodle to disguise definitive data. No. Just admit what you actually see, overwhelming evidence of living things, according to their kinds, suddenly appearing, which, as a reminder, is exactly what the Bible teaches. Now, I don't even have time to get into TV, movies, and documentaries. All I ask is that you use the same line of questioning when you watch them. And in summary, we agree with Mr. D. Geology assuredly does not reveal any such finely graduated organic chain. Not then, not now, not ever. And that means the whole idea that the fossil record proves evolution has been debunked. Adios. So not only does the fossil record not portray the textbook evolutionary tree of life, but genetics and mutation rates don't either. If that's not bad enough, we have dinosaur soft tissue and collagen and peptide and racemization rates which all show that these dinosaurs didn't even live that long ago, let alone evolve into birds. So since all that is left for them is the subjective assumption-based ever-changing cladistics to force birds being dinosaurs, well, that simply isn't gonna work. Cladistics isn't proof of anything. And it's a far cry from a fact, because if it was a fact, the charts wouldn't be changing all the time. The reality is clear. What we observe is very much different than what they tell us, and evolution is no more science than McDonald's is health food. They will show you a series of bats evolving, but have zero evidence for any of it. How can they get away with this? This is fraudulent all the way to its core. They know they are lying to you, and they do it anyway. An amazing 1,000 fossil bats have been collected so far. Many of these are complete bats. Some show breathtaking minute detail, such as wing membranes, fur, and even stomach contents. Despite this rich fossil record, Darwin's predicted intermediates have not been found. There are no fossils showing a ground mammal similar to a mouse slowly changing into a flying mammal, a bat. You would guess that there'd be some sort of a bat precursor, but once again, nothing. Bingo, they just show up and so... <laughs> When is it theorized? Well, it's also, that must have happened also in the, in the lowest tertiary. But we have no evidence for, for this evolution. Also, the bats appear perfectly developed. Now, in creation science, we look to what's called baromenology. This can tell us what a created kind is, but also, and more importantly, how we draw the line between kinds. With that said, what is the criteria for this? Well, we don't need just the fossil record. We can look at living species today and unite them all under one family, and then decipher how many physiological differences there are within the family. So when we take, for example, something like cats, there are very little differences between them. Even a lion is basically a scaled up house cat. Some species, however, like deer, are much more diverse they can have an upward of 20 differences between the different species. This is all important information to know. So when we look at, let's say, humans, how can we tell us apart from primates in the fossil record? Well, the same way we would by looking at living species that are related today. So if all cats have massive similarities, but only three to four differences, and we can look in the fossil record at something we believe might be a cat, but it has 20 differences, then it clearly doesn't belong in the cat family. The differences are just far too vast. And we can do the same thing with humans. 
How many morphological differences are there between living humans today and let's say Denisovan and Neanderthals, which they classify as subhumans? Well, none. They don't possess any more bones or any less bones. They just have some features that are more or less pronounced. And there are people today with these features. But if we put a human against a primate, there are over 15 differences no matter what primate we want to compare. Sure, we might find one species of ape that might have a single similarity, but this is no means a transitional form, as it lacks all the evidence to show that it has changed over time. It only shares that one characteristic. Now, putting this to the test with a dinosaur, we find this same pattern. Distinct groups of dinosaurs that arise out of nowhere and then vanish. We even find some birds in their stomachs, yet they want us to believe that these birds came from the very dinosaurs that ate them. Think about it. The oldest species alive today would have the most diversity within the species, right? But that's not what we see. Look at deer, for example. In the evolutionary concept, deer are relatively new, yet have tons of diversity. Yet we look at supposedly ancient species, like alligators and crocodiles, and there's not much diversity. Why is that? Our model answers this perfectly. Evolution fails down the line. video please make sure to hit that like button it really does help and subscribe if you enjoy the content and want to see more and find more of us on our main channel on team standing for truth this is Matman. until next time